Here we have a new type of problem. Um, this is a particle problem, and the reason I say it's a particle problem because it always starts with a particle moves along an x-axis. So basically we have an x-axis, and then that particle is either moving in the positive direction or in the negative direction, moving with a positive velocity or a negative velocity. Um, I could definitely see this kind of problem being on the test. They typically are. Um, I also want to mention that this problem specifically probably won't be there because I'm guessing that you're going to have a no calculator question and this one requires a calculator. So just imagine that this function right here were a little bit easier to take derivatives of or to integrate to find position or to find, to find uh, velocity or acceleration. Okay, But we are going to have to use a calculator on this problem. So it says a particle moves along the x-axis with a velocity given by, so this is our differential equation, and it's from 0 to 3.5, okay? The particle is at position x equals negative 5 when time equals 0. So this, is, this time, t, is normally our x value, and v, or like position x, is normally like f of x, right? But it's x of, so our position would be x of t technically, or something like that possibly. Okay, so first question, it says find the acceleration of the particle at time equals 3. So we basically just have to take the derivative of this, and then we have to plug in 3. Okay, And since it's calculator required, we're just going to do that on a calculator, right? So y, I'm going to graph it, alpha f1, enter, and then 10 sine 0.4x squared close the parentheses, and then x squared minus x plus 3. And of course, all my x's are really t values over here, right? And graph it. I already have our graph customized just a little bit. It looks like I'm zoomed in too far. It looks like 0, 1, 2. And I hate when I do this on the color calculators because they move so slow that I have to resize it, right? Because if I hit time is three different take the derivative it's not going to graph it so i'm going to go zoom six or let's just customize the window a little bit more looks like i want x to go from maybe negative one all the way to and it goes to 3.5 so let's go to four okay and regraph it and next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go second calc and then i think it's option six on the calculator so come on waiting for it i'm going to go ahead and get my answer set up v prime at 3 is going to be equal to some answer, right? The derivative or the slope, we're really talking about the acceleration. Second calc and option 6 is derivative. And I want to do it at 3. Okay, so there's the derivative and it's negative 2.118. Negative 2.118. Box my answer up. Right, so this technically is the acceleration. It's accelerating in the negative direction. So like rocket boosters would be shooting that way, even though the particle might possibly be still moving to the right, maybe possibly to the left, but the acceleration is going that way. So find the position of the particle at time equals three. So the position is gonna be, and of course this is where we have to use the initial condition, right? We knew we were gonna use that at some point in time, and it's on this part problem. So find the position of the particle. That means I want to take and integrate from 0 to 3, because I know the position at 0. The position at 0 is negative 5. And I want to integrate this function, which is v of t, integrate the velocity, right? And one more thing. This is how far it's going either that way or this way, right? We also want to take the initial position. So negative 5 is the initial position. Okay, we have to figure out what that is. So I want to second calc option 7. Option 7, and I want to integrate from 0 to 3. 0 to 3. And this is it moving to the right. This is going to the right, going to the right, further to the right. That's all the distance to the right, and a little bit back to the left. Right, and it looks like we have 3.239, and then I'm going to subtract 5. So our final answer is negative 1.760. And I would put units in there, but they never gave me units in the first place, like meters or feet. But that's the location, like on the number line, basically. It's a little bit to the left, 1.76 units to the left of zero. Definitely write this down. This is going to be worth a point. 
that's going to be worth a point, but obviously you would have to actually integrate this if it was no calculator. Okay, next one. So it says evaluate from 0 to 3.5 the function. Okay, I could do that on a calculator. And then also evaluate the absolute value of the function. Interpret the meaning of each in the context of the problem. Okay, I'm a little annoyed about that question just because I'm going to have to maybe try to figure out how to go absolute value without retyping it. But I can do the first part, which is evaluate this thing. Second calc, option 7. And then from 0 to 3.5. Okay, and it's going to give me my answer in just a second here. It's shading blue over the blue that's already there. It should go just a little bit further. 3.5 is right about here. So the answer is this one equals 2.843. And what does that represent? This represents um, whatever the original position was. So from... position at time equals zero, it is the distance away from, away at 3.5, okay? At time 3.5, let me go at t equals 3.5. So I didn't say that very elegantly. Um, I'm not really worried about that. Basically, it's how far away from whatever the original position was. In this case, it was negative 5. But whatever the original position was at 0, it's how far away it is now at the time 3.5. Okay. And so for the next one, the next one is... Uh, first, let's try to go after the answer. Can I go absolute value around this whole thing? Hopefully so. Let's go alpha F2 absolute value, and that thing is not typed in there, unfortunately. So let me go ahead and retype it. Um, do I want to retype it? I might have to use it on the next one. I think I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go second quit. I'm just going to do it manually here. Alpha F1. Um, and I want to integrate. So that's going to be this one. I want to integrate from 0 to 3.5. I'm just doing it manually because I don't want to mess up my graph. I have to type it in anyways. Absolute value is right there, alpha F2. And then I have to type that fraction in, it's alpha F1. It's like all these shortcuts, right? So I have 10 sine 0.4 x to the second, close it, and then x squared minus x plus 3, and dx. All right, so hopefully I typed that all incorrectly. No, I am in radians. I did check that before I started on the problem. And final answer here is going to be equals, equals calculators thinking, 3.737. I'm going to box this answer up. And I'm going to box that answer up. And I would put units if they gave me units. Okay, so what does this actually represent? This represents, this represents the total distance traveled. Traveled. And you always want to mention the units there, or the, the numbers there, from, from time equals 0 to time equals 3.5. Right, so we could say this is displacement, and this is distance, because it has the absolute value. Okay, and last part. Last one. A second particle. So it's almost like they, each problem is worth nine points. And so it's almost like they didn't have enough questions to ask on this problem. They asked us to take the derivative. They asked us to integrate. They're running out. So they start to introduce another particle, which is just a way for them to ask a couple more questions. All right, so a second particle moves along the x-axis with a position. This is actual. Whoa, this is different. This is position. They're giving us the position function, whereas before they gave us the velocity function for the other particle, from 0 to 3.5 also. At what time t are the two particles moving at the same velocity? We want velocities to be equal, in other words. Well, I already know the velocity of, of the original one. The velocity of the original is right here, right? So I just need the velocity of this guy as well. So what I'm going to say is the derivative of x2 of t, x sub 2 of t, I'm going to call it v 
sub 2 of t, or x prime sub 2 of t. And that's going to be equal to, and I could do this manually, which is what I would expect on, on this year's test. So uh, that's going to be 2t and then minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to graph that as well. So I have the original graph, and then the velocity of this one is going to be 2x minus 1. Graph it, and I'm just looking for the point of intersection. And it looks like the point is right there. And so on this calculator, I, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say 10 sine 0.4t squared, all divided by t squared minus t plus 3. And that's equal to, equal to, um, and it wasn't that guy. It was 2t minus 1. Right? It was this guy. And to do it manually or on a calculator, you, know, you might have to do it manually this upcoming year, but to do it on your calculator, you go a second calc, and you want to find the intersection, option five. Enter, enter, and I'm already at the guessing point where I want, enter. It looks like the point of intersection is x equals, uh, I was looking for what time? So time is equal to, and it says 1.570. 1.570. You always want to go to three decimal places, box up answers. You could round appropriately or you could just cut it off. Okay?